Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. On this channel, we talk about problems people face in their day-to-day -day life. Let's start with the video. I-51M can acknowledge that welcoming someone who's supposed to be a parental figure in one's life is extremely difficult as is. Add to it haywire hormones and questionable state of mental being that teenagers are in, you've got yourself a textbook troublemaker and sources of worries for any newly wedded parents with kids from their previous marriages. My wife and I are no exception to that. I have no kids of my own, but I have plenty of experience dealing with them as I grew up being a kid and raising one at the same time. There's a considerable time gap between my older two sisters and my younger ones. I think it's past my ego talking when I say that I always knew my way around handling women, especially teenage girls, because I grew up in touch with my feminine side and drowned amidst them. When my wife told me that she had a younger daughter and that she was struggling to keep her at bay, I thought to myself, this is going to be a walk in the park for me, you know, seeing that I had all that experience. Anyways, it turned out to be for nothing, and she literally hated me from the first day on. It doesn't take much more than a teenager growing the balls to tell you off and kindly ask you to get the F off the seat that her dad used to sit on for you to realize that you probably didn't score very well with her. I still had hope though. I was still convinced that my personality would help me find middle ground with her that would warm her up to me and make us tight buddies before and, more importantly, create a safe zone father-daughter relationship. I guess if things had gone that way, I wouldn't really be writing this. Still, the situation is actually a lot worse than I had initially anticipated. You see, I caught my stepdaughter red-handed doing the exact shiz her mother strictly and explicitly told her not to do. These things weren't really things that would have jeopardized her well-being, and the only reason I ever caught her doing them was probably that she wasn't as careful trying to keep them away from me as she was with her mom. I would often see her taking money off my wife's wallet. Though it was petty cash, I was trying to have conversations with her and tell her that these habits would compound and turn her into an unpleasant human being. I'll admit, I was probably manipulated by her into staying silent, but at this time, I figured as long as I had an eye out for her, I'm having these frequent conversations about her, I remind her how much I care about her and how much she means to me. Things would eventually get smooth between the two of us, and we'd all have what we wanted. Again, that's clearly not the case, because things spiraled. Her overall behavior started getting worse and worse, so back to the money example. I would catch her taking money from my wallet rather than that of my wife. The reason that's considered worse isn't about me, but rather that I don't keep most of my money in cash form. So when she would come across my wallet and I'd catch her snooping, swiping out one of the two bills is 100 to 200 or even $400 because once again, most of my readily available money is in cash form rather than the card. When I confronted her about it, she straight up denied it. She started to threaten me in a way, going on and on about how she would tell mom that I've been assaulting and abusing her. Honestly, I can't tell what's the reason that shocked me into not reacting. I'm not sure if I didn't feel entitled to correct anything about her or her life, or the fact that I know my wife is a good mother because enough to crumble my world into pieces should this little demon spawn manage to convince me her. Either way, I started carrying my wallet around me wherever I went and her swiping cooled down for a while at least. I guess after she realized that my money won't be there, she looked around the house and found plenty of opportunities to make all that money back. I would go into my shed to fix something in the house and realize that small bits and pieces of my equipment going missing and slowly but surely, the most expensive item, being the drill which cost me a lot of money since its excellent quality, was nowhere to be found. At that point, I was furious and immediately called my wife 
and told her to talk to her because I wasn't having any of it anymore. When my wife confronted her after she got back from school, she completely denied it for a solid hour before she burst into tears and said that her friends were trying to construct DIY makeshift skateboarding and some old drunkie came up to them and threatened them, so they just gave him all the tools that they were using. I guess she had recently talked to my wife about purchasing a skateboard. My wife dismissed her, saying that they were too expensive, plus of no good, in my wife's defense. She broke two bones while riding one not too long ago, so it's understandable as to why she's not very fond of them. What isn't understandable is how the little demon spawn managed to probably think ahead of me and talk to my wife about the skateboard just because she knew she had her eye out on the tools. My wife didn't really put all of her guard down because she knows her daughter better than anyone and if she cries, it's probably for really malicious reasons. Which, in this case, it wasn't because she's clearly lying about something that's starting to get out of hand. Now, she's not a young, angsty teenager anymore. She's barely even a teenager. She's turning 20 in a couple of months. She's not doing well at school at all. Spends most of her time with the wrong groups of people and brings all of their pent-up angry energy into her home, which seriously started to bother me. There's no reason for her to hate either one of her parents, yet she still thinks she's the most wrong person in the history of mankind. I've been sober for 20 years now. I take a lot of pride in my journey because I started from point zero by myself and dealt with alcohol addiction while doing so. I don't go to parties where I know alcohol will be served. I don't mingle with smokers or drinkers. I'm doing my best to stay clean. My wife and her daughter are the most aware of how tight-knit my sobriety is, so I guess because my sobriety date is like a week or so after my birthday. The number 20 is considered a milestone. My wife decided to surprise me on my birthday party and bring all of my close friends and family members and host a bit of a two-in-one party, which I really appreciated. I just wish it hadn't gone so effing sour because of that little shiz that I call stepdaughter. After the party was basically over and people were anticipating leaving to their homes, my wife shushed everyone so I could have at it for a while and open all the presents everyone got me. I started with my wife and though it was automatic for me to reach for my stepdaughter's present, there was something in me that really didn't want to do it and boy should I have listened to my gut. I opened up the coffin box she had gotten me and it turned out to be a $50 bottle of bourbon that had stacks on stacks of pictures of me at parties with my friends back in the days, basically reeking of alcohol and nearing the blackout point. She told me that it sounded ironic and in honor of whatever the shiz she was saying, I was furious enough to not even process what she was saying. All I could think to say was, get out! And as I repeated it to her with an increase in tone at each repetition, I was fighting every atom of calmness in my body to not get up and smash the bottle against her head. She was doing this for the sole purpose of tearing me apart and ruining my relationship with my wife and family. And I knew it. She knew it. She's an adult. I'm an adult. But sadly, that's not good enough reason for me to have a go at her. My wife was so embarrassed by her behavior that she asked everyone to leave. Everyone obviously easily obliged because I personally wouldn't want to stay and watch a grown man at the brink of tears while fending off the desire to shut that little shiz down once and for all. Not the a-hole. Dude, that's messed up. I always think that people that go above and beyond to tamper with other people's sobriety should be admitted into the AA. And no, not what you're thinking, admitted into the A-hole academy. Because boy, do they get on my nerves and I literally never hesitate to press the A-hole button every time I hear stories of them. Seriously, kind of like people who think it's okay to project insecurities. They do it like they're being dramatic and they're just joking when they know dang well it hurts your feelings and only tailors to their sadistic and sick nature. Kick her the F out. Why did your wife sit back and say nothing to her daughter? Like, I understand that you've been part of this family for so long that you're supposed to be considered the father figure and it's conventionally that she doesn't intervene when you're doing your thing with your daughter, but she clearly couldn't give less shiz about you being her fatherly figure. 
and doesn't even consider you that way. Why the hell didn't the wife kick her out sooner? This good-for-nothing child is better off the hell away from all of you. For her and especially for your very own sake, definitely not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. And although I don't think you should have been embarrassed to teach her the lesson of her life in front of the whole family because for some reason, public humiliation teaches lessons a lot better. Here's the next story. My 25F husband, 27M, are friends with a married couple, J and D, whose kid is turning 5. We have known them for 8 plus years, so well before they had a kid. They were the only couple we know with a kid, so I try to be supportive with their kid-friendly activities. We don't see them too often, but we're still good friends. Every year, they have their kid's birthday party at a park with a nice big playground. D usually has something going on the grill with snacks and cake too. J and D have other friends that do have kids, so there are plenty of friends there for the kid. We have been to every one of the kids' birthday parties, and my husband hasn't exactly jumped for joy about any of them, but we've gone to all of them and at least had a decent time eating food and talking with J and D. This year, ever since I reminded him that the kid's birthday was coming up, he got in a sour mood talking about it. He says things along the lines of, why do we have to go to a toddler's party and makes faces at me when I remind him it's coming up. The party is this Saturday and I just got off the phone with him about it, which is why I'm posting because he kind of pissed me off and I want to see how other people take on the situation. Another important detail, my husband has a poor vehicle situation and has a loan set up to buy a new one. I told him we could go this Saturday to get his new car, so we had a legit excuse to not go. The vehicle thing needs to happen sooner than later, and he said he wants to go with his dad instead to help him get a good deal, which I agree with, so we're not doing that Saturday. He then says he wants to sell his current vehicle local, and we could do that Saturday. I told him that's not a legit excuse because he could post it online and be able to answer anyone off his phone while we were at the party. The way I see it, and I told him this, is that we're going to the party to support them as parents and to help the kid have fun. I also told my husband that when we have a kid, I would expect our friends to come to their birthday party and help us celebrate, so I like to do it for them. We do want kids in the very near future, so that's not something in question. But when I said that, he replied, well, I guess we see that differently then. And to be honest, I don't even know what he means by that. We're literally going to the park for like two hours, eating a burger, having some cake, and watching the kid tear open his presents. He never even really talks to the kid other than saying hi when we get there, just hangs out with D at the grill and talks to me and Jay. I just don't get why he's being such an ass about going to this birthday party and I kind of feel like an asshole now because I'm forcing him to go. I wouldn't go by myself either because J and D would ask about my husband since he's their friend. They know it's his day off and him and I do everything together. So am I the a-hole for making my husband go to this party? I do not go to children's birthday parties. I do not care if their parents try to make it a social occasion. It's a children's birthday party. And you can't force your husband to do anything he doesn't want to. And if you try to, he'll start resenting it. And you, like he is now. So I think you're an a-hole based on my preference and experience. There is some middle ground here. I mean, do you really need an excuse to not go to a kid's birthday party? Not wanting to go is enough. All of my friends have kids and I tell them all that if I feel up for it, I will come, although none of them ever require or expect it. And they've said the same thing to me. You're always invited, but never feel like you have to. And we get along just fine. You're the a-hole. Why do you both have to go? Can you not attend things alone sometimes? He can have a migraine, a stomach upset, eaten something dodgy, had insomnia the night before, etc, etc. Give him a break this year at least and let him tell them why he can't go on the day. He doesn't want to go. It's not enjoyable for him. The kids won't get anything out of him being there. It's nice to go to a friend's first baby party, but beyond that, they've met up with more parents and their kids have made friends. Next story. 
Okay, so before I start, this post is not about the relationship between my mom and I. I just want to know if I was the a-hole for the situation. For some context, I got sick because of medical malpractice. It got so bad that I needed my family to help me get back home, but since then, I have improved. I try my best to handle a difficult situation and work together with my new docs for my health. My mom was part of this journey as I needed a lot of help, many surgeries, etc. But since I got more independent, she tries to get her control back, i.e. I get meds for the pain I have, and whenever I do something she doesn't like, she talks about guardianship for me. I'm not sure if it's a joke or not, but it's hard to handle. After one surgery, she even threatened me to take my meds away and give them back to me how she wants and thinks it is okay. She is not in the medical field. Now to the issue. A year ago after my last surgery, I needed to learn how to walk again. Because of everything that happened before, I was afraid to break something, etc. and went to my orthopedic doctor. I didn't know that my mom fed him lies that I didn't want to walk and wanted an amputation. I didn't. I was in so much pain that I was crying on a daily basis. And so when I went there, he screamed that it was all my fault. Because of everything that happened at the beginning, I have PTBS and him screaming at me made it worse. I stopped the appointments and lived with the trauma. When I found out what my mom did, I decided to tell my doctor to never tell her anything about my medical situation and to stop believing her when it comes to my health. He told me that I only have one mother and she's just trying to help, but when I told him that I am old enough to decide this, 24, he just ignored it. Thankfully, the nurse wrote it down, but I wonder if I was the a-hole for this. I know my mom is worried, but I just want to never experience these things again. Edit. A few things for clarification. I live in Europe. I won't go into details further because my family is on Reddit. She is one of my contacts in case of emergency. Nothing else. I never gave permission to anyone that they could tell her about my recovery, and she was the one that went to the doctor and cried about my situation. I don't know if he told her anything. I am in no guardianship, and as far as I know, my main doctors are thinking I am a capable adult that can decide for herself. I never abused my medication. My mom doesn't want me to get my leg amputated. I answered this question in a comment. I am a chronic pain patient because of medical malpractice, so I am in constant pain. When I have a flare-up, I usually do nothing besides crying, and at one point, I told my mom I would just want to cut my leg off to get rid of the pain. Sorry for the misunderstanding. Definitely not the a-hole, but I can't decide who is the bigger a-hole. Your mom who is controlling and abusive, or the doctor who is unprofessional and it's illegal to tell medical stuff to other people. You're not a minor and she has no business in knowing anything your doctor should keep quiet. Even though your nurse took the note, I would recommend changing the doctor and not telling your mom. Not the a-hole. Ask to put a password on your records. We've had to do this with a close friend of mine who was a victim of factitious disorder imposed on another in childhood. Her mother was her abuser, and now she constantly tries to meddle in care and get information. Now, because it's her mother, she knows her birth date and her SSN, Basically, any information she would need to get into the charge. Now we have a password that they ask for before giving out any information over the phone, online, or in person. You have a right to privacy and to manage your own medication and treatment. Your mother is abusive. Even if it is coming from a place of love and concern, it is abuse. You can only do what you can to protect yourself, and that is a good first step in protecting your privacy and autonomy.